I've been making slow but steady progress on this loop antenna that's built into the back of the radio. The way I've been doing it is, well, first I untangled it as best I could, and then I started from the outermost loop and started putting dabs of glue at uh, strategic points. At first I was using 5 minute epoxy, uh, but that got old real fast because I could only hold down about 2 or 3 loops stable and then I had to wait a long time for the glue to dry before I could move on. Then I got smart and pulled out a hot glue gun and put a splotch of that around and as I do each loop I just kind of remelt the existing glue or add a little bit more and I'm slowly working my way in and I'm using a toothpick to kind of position these and maintain the spacing. Uh, now, now that I've got uh, Oh, maybe a third of it done, it's starting to go faster and faster because it's kind of holding itself in place now as it gets more uh, more glued down. So I hope uh, maybe within an hour or so I will be done and I can hook this back up and give it a try. It took a few hours, longer than I thought, but it is finally done. Not something I ever, ever want to have to do again. Uh, but it's done, so now for the important thing, does it actually work? Okay, I've got it reconnected. I did uh, trace this out a little more carefully, and here's how it actually hooks up. The innermost part of the coil goes to this lead to the tuner capacitor, and also to this trimmer cap, and that starts the loop, goes to this uh, bus here, and then around and around and around and around and around, and the end of that loop is connected to the other side of this trimmer capacitor, and then through this wire, over to this white wire, and down underneath the chassis. Now the third wire, this black one here, that goes to this outer loop, which is just a single pass around the rectangle, and then it stops here. It is not connected to the inner loop at all. And then it goes through this resistor to this terminal, which is for the external antenna. So if you hook up an external AM antenna, it actually is just inductively coupled to the internal AM antenna, which I thought was kind of curious. I'm used to radios more like this Philco 60 from the mid-30s, where the antenna hookup, there's two screw terminals, ground and then antenna. And the antenna is a uh, just a... A random length of, uh, of wire. Uh, no loop or anything like that. It's not a tuned antenna at all. Uh, so that's why I was a little bit puzzled by this at first because normally I only work on radios from the 20s and 30s. This is actually the newest radio <laughs> even though it's from 52 or 54. This is actually the newest radio I've ever restored. Um, it's, only, it's the first FM radio that I've restored as well. So let's give it a try. If you recall, even with the other loop antenna that I scratched out of a stereo receiver, uh, AM reception was really poor. I had to turn the volume up all the way to get anything intelligible. Start all the way at the low end. So I'm fairly familiar with the AM stations around here. Less risk from the, the flames that were there. Okay, it's probably AM 5, 560, I think it is, WIND. And I just have the volume turned up a little way, so the gain is much, much better now than it was before. Sounds pretty good too. Oh, AM670, another strong station. Next I should hit seven, uh, WGN AM720, so really strong signal on Andrew. Well, 
tengo entendido que, bueno, antes de soltar el tema, este, les acordamos a todos que... Uh, no, sure what that is. Is. So it's really good game now, picking up a lot of stations. I think that's the strongest station in my area. I think it's running M1000. So, yeah, this, uh, this re repaired antenna is definitely a uh, success. Not going to find much music during the day. There are some stations at night, like AM740 out of Toronto, Canada, that uh, does like an overnight jukebox of uh, classics from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But during the day, I can't really pick it up. You get better reception at night on some stations. Plus, I think they alter their broadcast power. Some stations, I believe, broadcast with more power during the day and then less power at night, which lets other lower power stations come through more clearly. There's some music. So the radio seems to be working just fine on both AM and FM now, which just leaves a few tasks. One, if you recall, I had just temporarily tacked in some replacement electrolytics down below, and they weren't quite the right value. Well, I ordered up some caps and they have arrived, and here they are. The original was this four suction can here. Three suctions at 75 microfarad and one at 30. I tacked in some 68s, which are lower than the original. I like to go at least the same capacity, if not a little higher. So what I ordered up are some 100 microfarad uh, Nichicons, rated for 105 degrees Celsius, and they are part of the line of skinny capacitors, meaning they're small in diameter. So all three of these, plus this little 33 microfarad, will fit inside this can with no trouble. I've already uncrimped the seam around the bottom and next I will heat the can up to loosen up the tar holding the insides in and pull it out. A little heat from a heat gun softened up the tar and the insides came right out. Base is in good shape so what I need to do now is unravel a bit of this and try to clip off the leads going to these four terminals. Here's what it looks like when you unroll one of these guys, in case you were curious. Sort of a jelly roll of aluminum foil and a paper-like membrane. This is what's soaked in the electrolyte fluid. These can dry out over time as water escapes from the base, especially if this is running in a really hot environment. It will uh, just accelerate the process. And once these dry out, they will lose capacity and possibly even the plates will short out, which is why you need to replace these. As you unroll it, it starts exposing these aluminum uh, tabs that are attached to the steel terminals around the base. But you can't solder to aluminum really. So what I'll be doing is I expose these, I'll be trimming them off, and then I'll drill a small hole near the base of each one of these lugs so I can feed a capacitor lead through, wrap it around and solder it on. Once I finished unraveling this I washed it under some hot soapy water and uh, one thing I think is kind of neat on this is the way the terminals are designated. Typically on multi-suction capacitors each suction is assigned a symbol that's how you know which lug is which and this has a half circle, a square, a triangle, and then nothing. 
and you can see those on the bottom here like this is the square that's the triangle and so on well what's neat I think on this is that you can see those on this side as well there's the triangle there's the square there's the half circle and there's the blank one so when I feed through the new capacitor leads I shouldn't have any problem identifying which one goes where I recently picked up this Black & Decker variable speed reversible drill and this is the first time I've used it. did a pretty nice job. I drilled a small hole near each of the lugs and then there was already a vent blowout hole here and I just drilled uh, straight through that. That's in case the gases inside the capacitor ever build up. They can vent out that hole rather than the can exploding. Uh, so yeah, you... Uh, <laughs> The harder you pull the trigger, the faster it goes. There's a low speed. That last is really high speed. Eh, not bad for 30 bucks. Made in China, of course, like everything is these days. So, and now, the challenge is to get creative with the capacitors and arrange them such that the positive can go out each one of those holes. Positive is the longer lead, so uh, basically you stick that through each one of these holes and then arrange it so you can get the ground out the center. Now if that was just one capacitor, hey, that, all I gotta do is that, there I'm done. And you wrap the lead around the lug on the other side. But uh, I have to squeeze four of these in here, so we'll see how that goes. Here's why I've soldered the four capacitors together. Remember the can is a common negative to all four sections so I rotated the negative lead on each of the cans so they were facing the middle twisted them together and then soldered them together and then bent the outer lead so they line up with the holes and now I can simply thread all five of these leads through the holes I drilled remembering that the one oddball small capacitor goes to the tab that has no symbol on it, which is that guy. I've wrapped the four leads around the lugs, soldered them on, wrapped a little bit of electrical tape around the capacitors to secure them, and then shot a little hot glue in around the base to make this a really solid, stable construction. Now I need to pop this back in the can and put the ring back on and then crimp that seam back over and finally I'm polishing it up with a bit of Simichrome just take a clean rag, dip it in the pink goo rub it on, polish it up and then buff it out with a clean section of the rag and it uh, comes out looking nice and shiny